All right. Um, so today, well, good morning, happy Mother's Day, obviously. And um, we are going to talk a little bit about Mother's Day from a very different perspective, I think. A little bit of a um, bold perspective on my end to bring the idea of uh, Mother God. Since all that we have known up to today is that God is our Father. So I want to challenge a little bit this concept, um, addressing uh, this idea of Mother's Day from a spiritual point of view, which is what we do here. So Mother's Day, Father's Day, you speak about human celebrations of uh, temporary roles that we assume here when we are incarnated in our level of evolution. We incarnate in physical bodies, we have gender, but gender is of the body, it's not of the spirit. So the spirit is neither male or female, and the spirit is able of fully love. Um, and so we talk about motherly love and fatherly love. These are um, pieces, but the spirit, just like God, is neither motherly or fatherly, it's purely love. So we are going to um, speak about this important day because it is important in our level of evolution to, um, to acknowledge mother's love, father's love, to acknowledge love after all. But we're gonna try to bring in a little bit of a broader perspective. Okay, so this is a quote from Paul in his letter to Timothy, where he says, anyone who does not provide for their relatives and especially for their own household has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. Speaking about the importance of, um, you know, loving uh, within the family, right? Attending to our family, and we are gonna uh, get to this. All right. So before I get into the more specific Mother um, Day celebration, I want to talk a little bit about God and God's love. The picture that you see there is um, from a man. He's a, a Brazilian philosopher, a scholar in theology. His name is Leonardo Boff, and his background is Catholic. And we're going to talk a little bit about uh, his ideas as well. But um, the first bullet there have God's uh, pedagogy. 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 I don't know why it's so difficult for me to say this word. Um, whole versus part. When I am teaching a patient a new movement, and the movement is complex and it has several parts to it, we one of the techniques that we use as a therapist is to break the whole into parts. So if I need to teach a patient to do a transfer, I may uh, break that transfer uh, from a wheelchair to into parts. So standing, pivoting, sitting, parts. And the patient gets to practice the parts. Once the patient masters each part of the movement, then we put all the parts together so now the patient can have the full experience of the movement. And God works in the same way. Right, so for our level of evolution, the way that we learn is through contrasts. We're learning pieces. We need to master little pieces until we can have the experience of the whole. So as I mentioned to you, think about this. Is God male, female? Is God love a motherly love? Is God love a fatherly love? No. None of that exists when we think of God. God is. Is, is love in its, all its expressions, all ways that it can manifest itself. We are in these temporary experiences where we are learning pieces so that we can master each piece, integrate each piece and manifest love in its totality. So we come and we take a female body and what has been the role that females have had historically. Females have been in 
their homes for the longest time denied the possibility of intellectual evolution, going to school, learning, right? Um, certain uh, rights, um, even today, we still live in a world where uh, there is a number of um, differences um, in payment, for example, right? So things like that. But that's not the point of our uh, talk today. The point of our talk is because of this uh, uh, history, because of the culture, because of how things evolve in our planet, women, the spirit in the experience of a female body has been granted the possibility to develop more of this spiritual connection of the relating of the emotions whereas the spirit who has experienced more lives as a man has experienced other types of uh, of uh, possibilities because the spirit in the male condition has been out working developing intellectually right so we have these pieces of uh, experience in our uh, stage of evolution, uh, so to speak. But the main idea, and we see with progress, right? So today, this is very different, right? Today we have women who are leaders of big companies, and we have men who are extremely maternal. Because that's progress, and that's the way that's supposed to be. All of us spirits have the capability for maternal and for paternal love and the goal of our uh, lives and our journey is the integration into one thing because just like God is we also are God is love we also are love you know it's uh, expressions so with that in mind um, let me talk a little bit about uh, Bob and he he uh, has an article that he says that one day he had a difficult time sleeping and then he starts hearing his voice. He doesn't know if he's on mind or if he's being inspired. And so he starts to write about what the voice is telling him. And this is his vision very much from his uh, spiritual background, his spiritual belief system, which is a little different than ours, but I thought it was so interesting and so challenging. So the whole title of the talk comes from his article. is his writings on God and the idea that God is a Godmother. So that's why I want to share with you. So he says that when um, Jesus came to be with us, the male uh, figure was made divine in Jesus, right? And when Jesus comes, this is not him, this is me now. Jesus comes, one of the things that we learn in the gospel according to spiritism is that one of the main missions of Jesus was to um, lead us to a different understanding of what God is. So up to that point, our idea of God was that God was what? Kind of mean, uh, revengeful, right? Uh, very much mirroring our own humanity. So when Jesus comes, one of the greatest contributions that he left us was the idea that God is like a parent. But he had to use what was the culture of the time. Imagine if he would have said at that time that God was a mother and referred to God as a mother when women were, I mean, people didn't speak to women in the streets. So he had to make God a father. So, um, but it was an important contribution at the time because it shifted the understanding of the role of God. God being a parental figure, not someone who is there to punish, but someone who is there to educate, right? And to uplift their children. So he goes on, uh, Leonardo Boff, to say that the voice told him that um, in the passage, if he would go back to Luke, to the passage of the Gospel of Luke, when the Holy Spirit approaches Mary and tells Mary that she would be receiving a son, a child of God, uh, that, whose name would be Jesus, and that he would have a kingdom that would stay forever. She asked the Holy Spirit, how is that even possible, right? And the Holy Spirit 
Uh, this is the description that you find in this versicle of Luke, says the Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So, uh, Boff's interpretation is that that moment, the Holy Spirit or God, in that connection, that very deep, intimate connection with Mary, where Mary is given that divine mission, also makes women divine. So this is his thinking, right? So he's saying that man becomes divine in the figure of Jesus, and women becomes divine in this encounter with the Holy Spirit through the figure of Mary. So he says not only women becomes divine, but God's female portion, he talks about he's the one who brings this idea that God has a female, not only a male energy, but a male portion to itself. So it says, through Mary, God shows that beyond being a father, it is also a mother with all the characteristics of the feminine, love, kindness, gentleness, caring, compassionate, and mercifulness. So it's interesting and it's, um, it's challenging because we are moving towards God. That's the goal, right? To understand, to see God, meaning to be in line with God. And even for us as spiritists, I feel, for example, when we talk, uh, we hear about the law of action and reaction. It's presented with a, a, a tone of um, authority and sometimes it speaks about justice in a very cold way, in a very fatherly way, if you will. Uh, keeping up with the, the, the current understanding and how we perceive this dichotomy, father and mother, this separation, right? And so for us, it's important as we move towards God to understand that God, yes, God is fairness and there is a law that is immutable but together and very connected to this law there is love there is love so to perceive God in his role of a mother and it's very interesting because in other articles in other uh, moments where he talks about God he talks about God as a mother who is generating creating creating spirits he talks about the universe as his, this huge uterus where life is being created, where life is being generated. And he talks about God as this very caring and loving force that guides us and that knows us very intimately and that makes sure that each one of us succeed in a very motherly way. So. We are still talking mother and father as if there is a real division when we know that there isn't. But it's interesting if we think in our, where we are right now, that we integrate this idea that God is a mother force. Because sometimes it feels that it's, it's too far, it's cold, it's the law, but it's an immense amount of love in God. God is love, right? So that's the idea. So as we continue to evolve, um, the lessons for us is to seek conversion, conversion of these experiences so that we can be like God. We can experience love in its totality. So grow towards God is understand that God is everything, right? It is the law and it is the love. When we are here in the position of a, in, a, in a male condition, continue to develop the traits, their characteristic to the males in our culture, but also understand that the traits they are connected to women are divine, are godly traits, because God is all of that. And so I did a lecture here not so long ago talking about, I don't know what else anymore, but where I used that video, you know, playing like a girl, where, you know, playing like a girl is supposed to be an insult, right? So we are still dealing with this type of uh, feelings, but as we think out of ourselves from a mortal perspective, to be like a girl, of to embrace what girls have been uh, 
more exposed to is to be divine, is to be whole. For women to seek to, uh, uh, to grow intellectually, to uh, be energetic, when th things that have been traditionally uh, said to be men's roles is part of our evolution. So we should seek that as well, understanding that that too is divine. So there is really no uh, separation. So, but for today, I would like to, as we think about then this, um, the spirit who is undergoing the experience of a, a woman, and we think about all the, the, the possibilities that are there, one of them is the role of a mother, right? And the role of a mother, the role of receiving a child, because that's one difference. If we can say physically there's one difference is the woman, the, the female body has the possibility to, to carry, to be the, the pregnancy, to carry um, the physical body of another being, right? So that's one difference. So I want to focus for one moment on this uh, difference, on this role per se. And to do that, I'm going to refer to a story from this book, There Are Flowers on the Way, by the spirit Amelia Rodriguez. And in this book, Amelia Rodriguez, she says that um, a woman approaches Jesus and, and she asks him, um, I know that you come from God. She says, she, um, I, I can feel the grandiosity of your being that really touches and really moves me, she tells him. And she goes on to tell him that she's so thirsty for love that she's broken inside by her own inferiority, and that she has loved but has not found love in her life. And she said, she shared with him that for many, many years she has been disrespected and insulted in her most sacred feelings as a woman. And that life has been denying her what she's been looking for, which is happiness and peace. So after sharing that with the Master, she says, Lord, what can I do to experience happiness? And Amelia Rodriguez says that uh, Jesus stops and he looks around the surroundings where they are both standing and he will say to her, what do you see around you? And he will tell her, notice the flowers, the fruits, the river, the stars, in everything, he says to her, there is order, there is harmony, and there is love. And there is also the mercifulness of God guiding every single individual towards harmony and peace. What seems to be chaos will be transformed into blessings of peace and happiness. She's very moved by his answer. She's very moved by his love. But she tells him, Lord, I understand the grandiosity of the creation. However, I have sinned. And as the result of my sin, a child was born. My son was born. And at this time, he brings me anxiety and despair. So Jesus will say to her, the woman is always a mother, blessed by maternity, that is always a gift from the father, from the father, honoring life, a child in any circumstance is a star in the flesh with the opportunity to spread light on the way. Children are never sons or daughters of sin. They are gifts of life to life. Forget the circumstances of the birth of your child that knocks at the door of your heart and raise with him moving forward into the direction of the light. She's moved by Jesus' words and she seeks his eyes with her vision blurred by tears and she stands up to leave and he will say to her, Go my daughter in love. Maternity is the highest concession of God on earth showing that evil will never prevail in the world. 
because as long as there is a heart with maternal feelings on earth, love will shine and hope will never die. So I, this is a really beautiful story. It's called Jesus and Maternity. Then it speaks to us about a couple things that are important I would like to highlight. A child, no matter which circumstances this child comes to our life, is always a blessing. It's always a blessing. And it's hard for us to, as a society, to realize that if we are looking at life from the material perspective. But from the spiritual perspective, a child is always a blessing. And women have this role of being able to carry this life and to allow this life to happen, to come full term uh, through maternity. Now, what I was uh, also um, touched by is this very last sentence when he says, because as long as there is a heart with maternal feelings, right, maternal feelings, it's not a heart of a woman, it's a heart with maternal feelings. So I was curious. Mm -hmm. So what is maternal feeling? What comprises maternal feeling? And actually the Spirit's book has a question Question 890, where Kardec asks the spirit, is maternal love a virtue or an instinctive sentiment common to both humans and animals? And the spirits respond, it is both. Nature has endowed the mother with love towards her children in the interest of their preservation. But in the animal, this love is limited to their material needs and ceases when such care is no longer needed. In humans, it persists to life and consists in devotion and self-denial that comprises true virtues. It survives death itself, accompanying a child from beyond the grave. You can see that in it there is something more than in the animal. So that's a beautiful definition. So, uh, this maternal feeling, maternal love, is defined by the spirits as devotion and self-denial. So every single spirit sitting here today in these chairs are capable of maternal love and maternal feeling because this is what we're invited to do, to develop this love that consists of devotion and self-denial. So. As long as we have devoted and self-denial in our planet, love will prevail. So devotion and self-denial. Devotion, dedication. We are fully dedicated to our fellow human beings. And denial, that moment where you restrict uh, your activities or your desires to uh, uh, privilege someone else needs or desires, right? So it's the antithesis of um, what we call selfishness, right? So it's the ability to, so this is what we are uh, trying to develop. This is, um, we all love, call it whatever you want, paternal, maternal, fraternal, right? But the ultimate goal is to develop love in its uh, unconditional capacity, which the closest that we have of this type of love, we find where? In the family, right? In our families. So it's important to speak about the role of the family. So in spiritism, um, I know it's important for, ma for many other traditions, but for us, we have the understanding that in our households, we find spirits who have been very close friends of ours in many different lives. So it's that person or that child, or perhaps it's a spouse, that you have that very deep connection. Uh, but also, and more often than not, spirits who we have, if we are the parents, a lot of times, have somehow harmed or 
cause difficulties in those spirits' lives, and they are now in our household. And a new opportunity that's granted to us to undo what was done in the past by loving them and by guiding them. So if you were someone who misled and it doesn't need to be a, a child, but someone in a previous life, perhaps in this life, that person, that spirit that was misled by you comes back into your household so that you can lead him or her into, the, into a better path. So family is, spiritually speaking, is a laboratory of love. It's one of the primary demonstrations of God's love in giving us this very special opportunity to be together in a blood family with these spirits so that we can uh, uh, develop, expand our ability to love. And so what do we do for our children? We sacrifice for them, right? Yesterday I was at a birthday party and talking to another parent. And the parents telling me that they're moving from Miami to Fort Lauderdale because they're doing this move, which is not necessarily the best for them with their jobs, but it's the best for the kids, for their school. So these are small things, or not so small things, that we do for, for the kids, which means devotion and self-sacrifice. This is the lab. We are called to do that in our homes with the idea that as we expand in awareness, we're gonna see every single person. We're gonna feel every single person as deserving of that same devotion and self-sacrifice as we realize that we all children of God and belong to one spiritual family. So that's the importance of the family. Now, so what are the duties of the parents, right? Um, and it's interesting. I tried to find out this morning when this book was written, The Consoler, which is an outstanding book written by the Spirit Emmanuel, but he answers questions, okay, in several uh, uh, mediumistic uh, meetings. Questions were asked to him, and he answered these questions. I tried to find out um, when the book was written. All the, the in the spiritist uh, bibliography, there is this distinction made about paternal love and maternal love and what are the mother's duties and what are the father's duties. So this particular question is about the mothers, you know, and the next slide is from a different author who I don't know that well, um, incarnated. He speaks about the father's duties. but. As we are uh, uh, here today, we are going to uh, think about that as parental duties. Because after we read the answers that Emmanuel gives for what the mother should do to fulfill, I ask you, how would that be different to any father in the room? And when we read about the answer about fathers, the question is the same. How would that be different to any women in the room? So we're Spiritism is evolving, and a lot of the questions, if we look at some of the questions that were asked by Kardec, the spirits are going to answer in accordance to, they cannot go like, uh, you know, give an answer that people wouldn't be able to absorb at their time. So they in line with the time and the costumes and the, uh, the understandings of the time. But so in the consoler, what should a mother do to fulfill her duties conducting her children to love and truth. So a mother should be understanding, should sacrifice for the peace of the family, should provide God's love through her own love, should understand that the children are children of God, they don't belong to us, our children don't belong to us. Prepare the children for life's struggles and for work, Provide an understanding of what freedom means. See other children as her own children. 
teach tolerance for use energy when necessary, sacrifice in all possible ways for the harmony of the children, teaching that pain is to be respected and that all types of work are divine and that waste is always a mistake, teach compassion for others suffering so that they too can experience compassion in difficult times common to all creatures, listen attentively to the children's to the children, teaching them to have God's love as a reference to all circumstances of life, and provide kind of devices, stimulus to work, and source of uh, harmony. So, I think that's a good description of what parental love uh, should be, but I cannot today say that this is a mother's role and not a father's role, right? So, Joana de Angelis, in her more recent works, looking at family, she speaks about family a little bit differently. She talks about family as um, a place of where spirits come together to cooperate. So it's a teamwork with each spirit, with its achievements. Whatever you bring, because I'm a woman today, but I had many lives in the capacity of a man. So because I am in the body of a woman today, what does that mean? That all of my achievements while I was in the man's experience are lost? No, they remain with me. So what I bring to my household is my experiences as a mortal spirit. What Sherry brings to our household is her experiences as a mortal spirit. And we come together as two spirits to learn to cooperate, to together come up with the best plan for ourselves and for our children. And so, yes, so it's a, it's a teamwork where the roles, they, they are going to depend. You know, in some households today, the women are the ones who are making more money. A lot of times the men are staying home taking care of the children. So society is changing, the roles are changing because we are immortal beings, capable of love, and the role of the parents is together as a team to provide these things to their uh, children. So let's just look at the, so this is interesting because in this other book, there is this particular, particular item about authority. And of course, it, it speaks about the role of the father Right? So when this was written, I changed the words from father to parent. But it's a specific question about what is the role of the father, or is talking about the role. So the father is the authoritative uh, figure. But regardless, I like this idea of authority, okay? Because also nowadays, we see families where the parents have, absolute, have lost all the authority. The children become the authority in the house in an inversion because the parents were given the role and the mission. It's a mission to receive those spirits and to guide them. So if you lose your authority, then you can't really deliver your mission. So you have to keep authority. But what constitutes authority? I think it's important for us to uh, review. So this author, his name is Rodolfo Calagaris, I think, he says that legitimate authority is a process in which the parent, and in the book it says in which the father, helps the child to grow and to mature so that he, she can achieve autonomy with understanding that freedom has a price, responsibility. It is the way in which the parent conduct the child to self-realization, developing his, her potentials without asking from the child more than what he or she can give respecting the child's limitations. So that's the first part. And then he goes on to say, it is above all the moral strength that the parent needs to have over the child. The moral strength is based in the admiration that is awakening the child when the parents become a dignifying model to be imitated. The authority can never be imposed by violence. So I think it's a really nice definition of authority that comes from role modeling. 
that comes is not from what you're saying, but who you are, who you have become as a parent, which speaks to what? It speaks to the importance of bringing our children to the, their uh, Sunday classes. My children never want to come, and every Sunday they ask us, why do we have to go to the center, right? But we talk to them about it and about the importance of it. One day they will appreciate it, you know, either in this life or in another life, maybe not even in this life. That's okay, right? Um, but we are modeling. And this is the best that we can do. And the true authority comes from being able to model, but also being able to respect your children. Your child is not you. You cannot expect, it's not, don't make your child a reflection of yourself. So this shows respect for the other. And in that, there is also uh, this sense of authority. So I thought it was a really good uh, uh, definition that, again, it speaks to the importance for us as parents. And if you're not a parent, you, if you deal with children, you have uh, nieces and nephews, you can also be a model. We need to invest in our own moral education. We need to be the best that we can do for our children. The best that we can do is to invest in our own enlightenment. So you cannot ask them to behave in certain ways if that behavior is not something that's part of who you are. So if you want them to be something, you need to be that something first. You need to model what you want them to be. And so the importance of working on ourselves for the sake of our children. And I'm going to finish them with uh, these uh, little quote that came to me this morning uh, on Facebook. And, um, and then a little video that I think goes back to the idea of uh, what motherly love is. So here's the quote from Mother Teresa about parents. Teach them to fly, but not fly your flight. Teach them to dream, but not dream your dreams. Teach them to live, but not live your life. Teach them to sing, but not sing your song. Teach them to think, but not like you think. But you know that every time they fly, dream, live, sing, and think, seed will be in the way they thought and learned. So from Madre Teresa. So I think that's really um, uh, it's a beautiful uh, quote about what our role as parents really uh, is. All right, so let me put this video, and I'm going to go back to the definition of maternal love, consists in devotion and self-denial that comprises true virtues, according to Kardec. So maybe many of you have seen this. It's a very uh, moving uh, little uh, movie that speaks about what I think is uh, constitutes maternal love. So let's see. Thank you. 
tired. He lies that he is not hungry. He lies that we have everything. Hard not to cry, right? But this is why Jesus said in the passage of the book to the woman that as long as there is maternal love in this planet, evil will never prevail. So to all of you spirits here in this mission of developing um, maternal love, I wish you a wonderful Mother's Day and a wonderful Sunday. <laughs>